you want to do some insane stuff like that, stick around, bub. The Mega Man Zero games have been associated with the reputation of harboring some of the toughest difficulty in the series. But what's even more interesting is just how knowledge of the tech in this game is known by a minuscule percentage of players outside of dedicated speedrunning communities. Today, I seek to educate as many players as I can about the Zero series' variety of techniques, ranging from simple to more advanced. By learning how to play these games with the most advantages at your disposal, you'll be equipped with a skill set that's perfect for whittling down the difficulty and making your experience with these games much more fun and fulfilling. Now that they're all nicely bundled within the Mega Man Zero ZX collection, which should be out by the time this video is published. I won't cover ZX and ZX Advent, as I'm not as knowledgeable about those games as I am with the Zero series, and I'll leave that to a seasoned player of those games. Allow me to give myself a brief introduction for the newer viewers before I dive in. I'm Magnus Zero, and I have a small reputation for no damaging and challenge running the Mega Man games, primarily with Zero in the X series, and of course Mega Man Zero. I've been playing Mega Man games before my age even hit double digits, so I have 20 plus years of experience, and I'm willing to share what I've learned from that, as well as what I've learned from speedrunning and exchanges with fellow players. I must preface by saying that the tech that I'll discuss here will be broken down and with much more detail in the Google document within the video description. Before you ask any questions, consult that guide. This visual guide will run you through the tech of each game, and if you feel you need more help beyond this video, consider that an instruction manual I put together for you. Alright, let's get it. But first, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> nah, nah. You gotta be out your freaking mind. These techniques span across all four games, with Zero Four being the exception here and there, and I consider them to be fundamental to the core of high-level Mega Man Zero play. Let's start with what I like to call reversals. I'm sure there's an official term for this, but I don't care, man. Anyway, aerial attacks can net a second hit if you swing your saber, tap the D-pad away from the enemy, then tap back in very quick succession. This works because the saber animation and hitbox are still lingering, and enemies that aren't bosses lack iframes. Consider this a real boon in hard mode, since you're restricted from charge attacks and triple slashes there. Still, this speeds up your gameplay no matter what mode you're on. You can do this with pretty much every weapon within the series, except for the shield boomerang of course. Exclusive to the Z Saber, you can perform reversals with walking slashes, which are also very useful in hard mode. Since you can do this indefinitely, you can effectively consider this a grounded saber combo on hard mode. Do note that in Zero One, this isn't as seamless as it can be, and you can also dash into an enemy or walk straight into him if you mistime it, though this can be mitigated in Zero Four by turning off the command dash. Consult to the Google Doc guide for more info, but just know that in 0 2 through 4, walking slashes, aerials, and the sword are all cancelable into each other much more smoothly. Skull Crush is the tech where you can allow your saber's ending animation to infinitely prolong until you can either touch the ground or do so yourself. The purpose of this is to preemptively fall on enemies and has a variety of uses. To perform this, simply hold down on a D-pad after you swing the saber. I wouldn't recommend holding down first, as in, in 0, 2 through 4 you can accidentally use the EX skill associated with the down button, and that's never fun. It's also worth noting that this is possible to do after an aerial rolling slash as well. Here's a couple of exercises for you, in order to help you master the reversals. You don't have to do this, but it's just random things I threw together in order to put you into situations where it's kinda high speed and makes you get adjusted to the thump work you're expected to do with these tech. You cannot take damage during these exercises. Repeat these as much as you like until you've got the technique down. It's easy to do but a bit stressful to perform under the right pressure. Exercise 1. Defeat the Pantheon Warriors within 10 seconds on Destroy the Train mission of Zero One. You're only allowed to reversal saber into Skull Crash finisher for each enemy. 
make it to the end of the first train, then reverse back to starting point. This is to get you used to using reversals in both directions, as it's easy to get too used to using them in one direction. Generally, this is to the right, which is how most stages progress. Exercise 2. Defeat 5 respawning spikings with 2 reversal walking slashes at the disposal center stage of 01. This doesn't necessarily have to be in this exact spot, but anywhere where you can kill, walk away, then respawn. One final form of reversals is the charge Z-Saber Slash, though really this isn't exclusive to that weapon. You can also do it with any other weapon in the freaking series, though it's more effective with the charge slash because it gives you double damage with the charge slash if you apply the reversal technique to it. The charge attack is already broken as is, so add a reversal to it and you've got one of the most no effort tools you can use on normal mode and can effectively overshadow a lot of tech in 0, 1, and 2. You can loop the charge boomerang throw by jumping over it before it can return to you. Useful for many situations, especially on hard mode, since this is the only weapon you can charge there, except for 0, 4 as it doesn't really exist there anyway. Don't rely on this for too many boss battles however, most of them are too mobile for it to be reliable and it's quite situational depending on the boss. If you plan to use the shield boomerang as a primary or even secondary weapon through stages, you'll need to master dash jumping with it. You can't ground dash with it obviously, but if you tap, jump, and dash at the same time, you can still dash jump. It looks simple, though the timing can be pretty wild if you're dash jumping consecutively, especially under a lot of pressure. Whew! Two exploits kind of plagued this game. Some pretty gross ones at that. I won't get too deep into how these work on a mechanical level, I'll leave that up to the Google Doc guide. So let's discuss the more well known one. Shield Boomerang Infinite Saber Combo, aka this game's variation of Saber Dash Cancelling, or SDC for short, in the X series. To do this, simply put your shield up, then slash once with your saber. If you hold your shield into a charge, it'll cancel the end lag of your Z Saber animation, which the first slash always has the least lasting iframes on a boss. And you can perform an endless loop on most bosses. Pretty nasty. I personally don't like using it because it's pretty cheap, but if you want to cheese for an easier time with the majority of bosses, go for it, it's there. The triple rod exploit is of same nature. You can slash once or twice, then poke with the rod once before you can slash again after. This is a more modest variant, and I actually don't mind using it as it adds some degree of combo depth that this game lacks in comparison to its sequels. Another triple rod tech is the pogo effect, provided from the downward stab. Do this by pressing down and attack with the rod. This gives you a nice little boost for some technical play and can even speed up your runs a little with some smart pogoing. The charge attack of the triple rod is interesting, basically this thing has very short iframes so you can place this anywhere in a combo, beginning, middle, or end, then just do whatever the hell you want after. Pretty cool though, don't expect this to be as effective on most bosses. Only a handful give you that kind of opening, like Copy X or Harpuya. The latter you're gonna have a little bit more trouble to do, but it's doable. Zero Two is mainly a more polished game than one, so with addition to some smoother gameplay and certain forms like Active Form being integrated with the rolling slashes. All tech is virtually the same, except the transition into the hit priority system. I'll explain what the system is in 03, as it's more fleshed out there, but basically you need to know which attacks to use first in order to combo a boss during their invincibility frames, or iframes for short. Any charge attack, aside from the chain rod, can be used to start an iframe combo. Since they share the same priority value as a grounded or aerial saber slash, only the double and triple slashes will register as combo damage. In Zero Two, the priority value for the Saber X skills are also lower than the double and triple slash, so you can use them to start combos as well. I'm just showing a few combos here that are pretty optimal for neutral damage, no elemental chips.
Interestingly enough, the Kogenjin X skill functions kind of funny. It still has the same hit value as the other X skills, though for some reason, performing it will use up your saber slashes that follow after it. This actually works really well because the first hit of the triple slash doesn't even connect in these types of combos. If you use the X skill twice in a row, only the final hit of triple slash will come out. Sharp Edge is notorious for having a pathetic hitbox. While it's the strongest X skill damage wise, it's also the most risky if you're trying to avoid damage. However, there's a trick with it that not many people tend to pay attention to. You see, unlike the better versions of this X skill in 0, 3, and 4, you can actually control your trajectory a little bit. By pulling back on the D-pad, or forward, though why would you do that? <laughs> you can move yourself just enough out of harm's way and still deal the hit. Now, let's get into an even more interesting part, the Charge Chain Rod. It's funny because combo-wise, it's the exact opposite of Zero One's Charge Triple Rod. You can't start combos with it, but you can end them, because the Charge Rod deals a total of 3 hits. Treat each hit of the rod as its own triple slash, meaning nothing can combo after it. But if you do something like an X skill into a Charge Rod, you'll connect the last 2 hits of the rod. The hit priority system in Zero Two is incredibly simple, because you don't really need to know too much about the technicalities to get it. Take all these combo routes into consideration when you're using forms that disable triple slash. If you're using a form that's locked to one slash like active form, chain rod charge combos are your best bet for optimal damage. Oh right, this is where things get more complex. Zero Three is a huge step up in the tech game, mainly because the combo system is much more fleshed out. This is the part in the guide where I really encourage you to read the Google Doc if you want more clarity, as the tech in this game can be its own freaking video, I, I wish I was kidding. But let's cover Rakur Rod tech before we dive into the combo system. Don't let the Rakur Rod's damage deceive you. This is easily the best weapon in the Zero series because it's so versatile. While the Saber will always beat everything in raw damage, this rod shines in its utility. The pogo effect from the triple rod is back, but on steroids. You launch so much farther with it, and just like the triple rod, you can maintain your dash momentum regardless if you pogo off an enemy or boost off the ground beneath you. Pair this bad boy with the Z Saber and watch things die and get styled on. Don't underestimate its pushability as well. This clip should uh, speak for itself. Thousand Slash is a very awesome X skill that gives you damage that you're looking for. Though this skill is more noteworthy during the combo system breakdown. Speaking of that... The table shown here was made by McKenyon. Every attack Zero is capable of has a numeric priority value coded into it. This is impossible for you to see these in game, nor does the game even pass hints of this system. The larger the number, the further it needs to be in your combo in order for you to damage bosses that are in iframes. Naturally, the weakest attacks have the lowest priority, like your regular Z Saber slashes, so they need to be your combo starters. However, charge attacks and certain X skills are exempt from this. Every charge attack has a priority value of 1, and X skills like Orbit Shield have zero priority, no pun intended. So these are your combo starters, you know, when it comes to optimization. I must give credit where credit's due. I didn't know that Orbit Shield had a zero value, and I only learned that from a Japanese player, whose Twitter I'll link in the video description. Regardless, the Google Doc will outline some pretty optimal chip setups and information on how satellite elves play into giving zero extra attacks, as well as variants to the triple slash. The rolling slash is only usable through a satellite elf. Anyway, here's some optimal combo routes that I'll break down in order for you to see just how this works with examples. These are mostly combos made throughout the game's lifespan from other speedrunners and a couple of them I made myself. At the bottom of the screen I'll detail what's being done as well as a number in parentheses to reflect on the attack's priority level. Remember to look at that table for the values as reference. A pretty basic one, though a powerful combo at that. Most bosses die from this in two cycles. 
A more daring one if you don't use a charged buster at the start. You can still net the same damage without the buster, as it's just there for insurance, in case you lack confidence in your timing and spacing. Collision damage with the Gale attack is extremely common, but a risk most speedrunners don't care for. Bosses like Copy X and the final boss that stagger backwards make Gale attack combos more safe. One I made myself. It lacks the damage for a two cycle kill like the first two combos, but it's also the safest option to get in and out without sustaining damage. 1000 Slash has a priority of 1 through 4 because it hits 4 times, so you can't use anything lower than 5 after it. Another one that I made myself. This has the potential to 1 cycle kill bosses with elemental weaknesses, because the second hit from the orbit shield is resetting the combo. Note that ice weakness bosses will have a couple HP left, so you'll need to alter the combo, though I'll leave that up to you to figure out. Again, I won't list all the combinations, as that take away the fun from you learning unique combos yourself. Take all of this information, study the combo values, then craft your combos. Trust me, master the combo system and 03 will be a lot easier. Zero 4 doesn't change up the formula much from 3. The Recoil Rod and Shield Boomerang, as well as the Elemental Chips, are all gone, so the general game plan is pretty different this time around. This is less about tech and more so about... adjusting. With the absence of Elemental Chips, elements have been integrated into certain X skills and pilfered Z Knuckle weapons. This is one of the downsides to combo potential in this game, because certain bosses can just straight up make an X skill ineffective due to the element they're strong against. Of course, this means the opposite for elements they're weak against. This limits your creativity, though there's still room for innovative combos that aren't optimal damage. It's nowhere near the flexibility of 0-3, unfortunately. So, keep in mind that you can't fight bosses the way you can in Z3, which in a way makes a few of them more challenging. Z Saber X skills are pretty much the same combo value as 03, but obviously things are slightly different. Some nerfs to attacks here and there and all that jazz. In the video description, I'll link a game facts guide that lists all the priority values in 04. This includes the insane library of mostly useless Z Knuckle weapons. Let's get into something that got a funny little buff though. Sky Chaser, or Saber Smash in 03, is non elemental automatically making it 03 tier. However, it has an additional effect of causing two rocks to fly forward and back. These rocks do the same amount of damage as the Saber Slash, and has a combo value of 1. <laughs> Let that sink in a bit and watch this combo. Speaking of more combos, take a look at this one. My Kenyan showed me this one as well. It's a one combo kill with the junk armor chip combo. <laughs> junk armor doubles your attack power, which is why this is possible. Obviously this won't insta-kill all bosses, but the ones who are affected by the elements and have 64 HP. Again, seek a guide for how to obtain junk armor. Please don't ask me how to unlock anything. Man, I want to love the Z Knuckle. Reversals are really good with this weapon, and as you can see here, you can cancel the weapon steal animations for smoother and quicker gameplay. You can just walk, dash, or jump out of it, which is pretty rad. However, huge downside to this weapon is that it lacks the utility of recoil rod. The majority of the weapons you steal are pretty bad and not worth using. Only ones worth the trouble are the bombs that combo into themselves and the axe which deals an extra point of damage over the charge attacks, funny enough. There's other useful ones, but you're better off just not worrying about it. Personally, I just like to yoink and toss the weapons at other enemies. Do this by pressing the select button after you steal it. The Zero series has a lot of depth to it, and it's a shame that the tech's still not very well known after how old these games are. My job here was to simply bring all of this to light, and have this reach as many players as possible. I'd like to see players learn how these games were really meant to be played instead of just the usual charge attack spam. I hope this resource was helpful to you, and if you'd like to do me a little favor, 
please share this video and get it into a rotation. The more players who know of Zero Series tech, the more respect these games can garner, and it'll also bring in more interest to newcomers. The Mega Man community can benefit so much from having us pitch in and show how to push these games to their limits.